very jittery tonight. I don't know if other people are seeing that, but it's because we've got so much awesome happening that uh, you know we can't. Uh, so much awesome sauce. The universe just can't, can't handle it. this amount, yeah, of awesomeness. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Fraser Kane. I am the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for Sunday, January fifth. 2014. 2014. Yeah. Now, this is the first star party that we've done in 2014. We took three weeks off because reasons. And uh, there was various holidays and such, and usually typically bad weather. And uh, so we thought we'd give everyone a break. But everyone has returned. The skies have cleared. The telescopes are rolling. And it's going to be an absolutely terrific night. People have learned some new techniques. And, uh, and we've got... Daytime, nighttime, different objects. Oh, yeah. and some of it's us are still awesome. using Morse code. <laughs> oh yeah, I should be using speakers, shouldn't I? Yeah, all right. Um, okay, so it's totally backfired. Okay, so uh, first let's uh, let's introduce all the people who got joining us tonight. So we got man, I don't even know where to start. All right, so we got Bill in Oregon. Bill, uh, that's me. How's your how's your sky doing? Pretty good. It's supposed to clear. Uh, supposed to cloud up about midnight, and we desperately need the rain here, so I'm not going to complain. Yeah, um, we got uh, we got David Dickinson, hey, hey. the Astro guys Florida. in Florida. And how's your skies tonight? Pretty good. There's a thin haze, but I have the waxing crescent moon setting over here to the west, and I have Jupiter rising to the east. So I'll probably do the moon the first half and do Jupiter the last half. That would be great, man, the moon and then Jupiter. And we haven't had a lot of Jupiter yet. I have two targets. That's rare that usually I only have one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we've had this really great, nice crescent moon, so it's a good time to be grabbing the moon. So yeah, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. I'll flip over to it. And, of course, Gary. Hi, guys. Man, and you've got a new technique that you've been practicing that you're going to demonstrate for us tonight, right? I do. I'm going to yeah. try to give you false color color pictures. Yeah, so just to sort of clarify for people, so Gary has a uh, hydrogen alpha filter normally on his camera, which lets him see through the uh, sort of horrible light pollution that he's got in Los Angeles. But, and he can do, like, he can take photographs with three different filters. He's got hydrogen alpha, sulfur... Sulfur oxygen. and oxygen. Yeah. Sulfur 2 and oxygen 3. Yeah, and that's the Hubble palette, right? Well, no, the, the sulfur is a red. Um, it's a very, very narrow bandwidth of red. Hydrogen is also a red, a little different red. And oxygen is a green-blue. So if you think of the whole color spectrum, I'm taking little slices out of that. Then how I map them to a red, green, and blue, if I do it what's called the Hubble palette, I do sulfur as red, hydrogen as green, and oxygen as blue to get a color picture. Right, but the trick here is that we're going to get full color, which is, which is really cool. Now it's not it's false color, but it's still going to be full color. It'll really let right. you see the. And I know how much you just like are squeeing about this earlier. Everything, I think everything we have here today is in color. I know. This what is, the is going on. <laughs> I, am I, so I won't be colored. Stoked. I won't be colored. Oh well, then Stuart, you need to leave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's, that's all right. I all am right. focused though, so that's 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 a positive. We'll get you up to speed on this. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. And then we got some we haven't seen in a while, which is Paul Stewart from New Zealand. And that's why we're seeing the sun, because we live on a ball, and, and Paul can, can bring us the, uh, the sun. Uh, I love your sun, man. The, the promise is coming off. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big sunspot group, uh, 14, or 1944, that just rotated into view a few days ago. Yeah, look at that. Look at those prominences. This is yeah. just blowing my mind. It's 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 moving in that Earth aim direction too, so we may get a M or X class flare here in the next few days. If that, it kicks that, one off, it, things that are gonna get yeah. 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 Man, terrific. Uh, and of course my co host, Scott Lewis. Hey Scott. Hey, how's it going? Have a good holiday? Yeah, so far. So good. far, now back at it. Working. Yes. Want to say, do a quick shout out to all the cold astronomers in Washington D.C. <laughs> Tonight is the first night of the American Astronomical Society's 223rd meeting. If you go to the James Webb Space Telescope booth, say hi to Tony Darnell or Alberto Conti, and they'll give you a dirty look. Um, especially if you tell them that I sent you. But uh, I hope you guys are staying warm out there and enjoy the show. Yeah. 
I don't know, is it colder in Washington than the surface of Mars, like no, it was in I Winnipeg? think that was parts of Canada, not your parts of Canada. Yeah. But... I, I, had a, I had a friend come back from Winnipeg, and, and she was in Winnipeg when it hit that minus 51 Celsius. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I can't, and yeah, and and so at and that I've moment, seen cold. You know, I'm yeah. from Michigan. I know cold just, winters, but yeah. not. Just that remember, ne- negative forty is the same in both, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, fifty below in Minnesota. I grew up in northern Minnesota, so. Oh yeah, it, it, it didn't happen very often, but a couple times when I was there. And we've got Shah Ahmed from um, Malaysia, right? Yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite astrophotographers. And I'm so glad he's been trying to join us for it's been over years. A year I think. Since you've been yeah. yeah, yeah, two years probably. <laughs> and uh, but he always gets these sort of clouds. And uh, but it's uh, it's great. And and Shaw did a great uh, man. Was it last year? You did a great sort of shot of all the planets. You had sort of all of your best. Two years ago, I think you had all the planets. Yeah, yeah, just terrific uh, planetary photography. You and Mike are two of my favorite uh, astro planetary photographers. And Mike Phillips is here. Yeah, but we love you all the same. Yeah, we yeah, love you all the same. yeah, yeah. So we'll lump us all together. And Mike, we're just you don't have any solar yeah. family. So. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have any um, any clear skies tonight, but you've got uh, you're gonna bring some yeah. of your you're gonna show us some of your hits. So. Yeah, I got I got my uh, my roundup from last year, which looks pretty good, and then I got a pretty good shot of Jupiter uh, Friday night, which which looks sharp. So that's take great. a look at those in due time. Are you gonna try and read? Relive your animation of Jupiter. Yes, and uh, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve, and it's uh, opposition. I think is today. Today, today is opposition. So yeah. happy opposition day! So we got a good second half, hopefully coming up. Maybe get more yeah. clear skies. Now, was that before or after I was able to levitate? <laughs> I saw that going around. <laughs> that yeah, was so that, dumb. Uh, it was yeah. hear that, that Jupiter and Pluto were perfectly aligned. Because you know, Pluto's so massive. You know, and for you know, a few it, yeah. moments, if you jumped at the right time, you could levitate. It was Patrick yes. Moore. It was Sir Patrick Moore that Sir started Moore, that who, on April, April, April Fool's joke. As an April Fool's joke yeah. back in 1975. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. What yeah. was funny yeah. is how many how many calls they actually got in where people were saying it was working. Oh, it's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I felt it for a second there. Um, yeah. And uh, and last but not least is uh, is Stuart Foreman who is still setting up so he'll be ready to go in, uh, in a couple of minutes. Hi Because things are getting bright on the west coast again, which is which is good, bad. No, it's bad. It's bad. I like then it. We're gonna have all of our east coasters wine that we're going to midnight. I know, I know. You start at one in the morning. I don't like it. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I don't even know where to start. Okay. Well, I'm going to start. Let's with start with walk. where our audience can reach us. Oh, good point. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. So, so we've enabled the Q and A app here on the Virtual Star Party. So, if you want to uh, to ask us any questions, make any suggestions, got some requests, we'd be glad to pull up whatever objects are in the that we can try and find, and we've got a lot of telescopes tonight, so I think we can uh, we can find almost whatever you want. Um, so you can access the Q&A app. You can find it in if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Google+, Plus, if you're watching this kind of anywhere that's embedded on Universe Today, we'll be glad to uh, access the Q&A, and I will show you, for example, right now, if there are any questions. There's, there are some questions. Are there some Who questions? Be in this video? I'm in this video, Alexander. Hi. <laughs> um, we, we went over introduction, so that one's already done. Yeah, that one's already done. Will uh, someone have opposition Jupiter? I believe here we go. David will. Here you go. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will yeah. I'll pop over Kath, to you. Uh, Katharina Sable. How do I say it, Katharina? Is that right? Sable? Katharina? Um, asked, before the discussion is going on, I wanted to ask for your professional opinion on Mars One. There's a lot of skepticism, and I would be interested to think the whole thing will work. Discuss. <laughs> go. Mars go. One. Stop. Anyone who 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 would who would go on Mars One? Who go on I a one totally trip go on Mars? One. I don't Mars. care. Anyone? I, I have like... a, I got a buddy of mine who's who's applied. Yeah. Yeah. I will totally live tweet from Mars. <laughs> All day, All right. every day. Cool. Okay. Well. Oh. It's as like... cold as Winnipeg out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's. All right, I got I, people are gonna want to see some pictures. All right, let's move. Okay, first I'm gonna start with David's view because he's got the moon and he's gonna have to switch to Jupiter pretty soon. So, yeah, David, yeah. where, I, where? I have, uh, we're we're looking at the the Sea of Crises, Mare Crisium, right there, and it, it's interesting that that just about fills up my field of view with this webcam there. So, and the moon is what three, 
four days past new, I believe. No, it was new last week, so it's it's like six days past new, I believe. It's not quite first quarter right now. And all that turbulence you're seeing there is because of the moon. There's clouds passing in front of it, and it's about 20 degrees above the horizon and sinking. So I'm going to be losing it here in about 10 or 15 minutes anyway. I, I wasn't even certain if I'd be able to bring it in to the star party tonight. I thought it might be down below the roof. Is, is your webcam sensitive enough to get the... To get what? Go ahead, Michael. No, no, I was I was just going to ask if your webcam was sensitive enough to, to pick up any of the earth shine, um, your magnification. It, it might, it might. The, the problem is right now is uh, a lot of that, well, you're seeing the telescope is fogging yeah. up because it's it's always damp here, so you're seeing uh, fog shine kind of through the <laughs> scope. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back. I'm going to keep moving. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to Gary's view. Oh, Gary. This so, is um, our propeller nebula. And this is with the Hubble palette. So right. since this is a lot of hydrogen, this is showing up in green. Uh, all the hydrogen is green. In this case, again, sulfur is um, is the red, and oxygen is the blue. I'm mapping them out. Now I've got another one right here. No, wrong one. Let me bring. Why is it not? Shoot! Hang on. I'm tumbling over my own fingers. Turn it off and back on again. Yeah. <laughs> Shake it upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, IT. Hello, IT. Okay, well, you you sort it out. I'm going to move on to cool. Michael's uh, Michael's picture here. Yeah. So this is uh, every year since uh, I think this is the sixth year in a row. Uh, I have done a best of compilation, and uh, I always try to get you know planets are my thing, so I always get the planets, and I always try to add more to it each year. So this year I've got four comets, which was this was the year of the comet, right? So this is comet Linear up here. This is comet Ison here. Uh, comet Panstars in the uh, sunset, and then down here is comet. Uh, what's the one that's still in the morning now? Damien Peach had the astronomy picture of the day for that one. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it now. So that's was four, four comets, which was pretty good. I think I nabbed all the planets. I got a kind of a obtuse looking Mercury. I got a Venus shot here. You know, obligatory Earth shot of some sort to be included here. I got How'd you get Mars. That one? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Is it gonna like jump you high in the air or something, right? Point it back down at the ground. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn. Uranus, Neptune, and then uh, my Pluto here is actually a, an animation of three different shots that, that I can uh, post to the Hangout feed after there. And then uh, this was kind of neat. I got the International Space Station, oh, and awesome. then uh, another satellite here. I don't know if that well, you can make that one out. It was in the same field of view, and it was totally unplanned. I was like, oh, look, there's the ISS. And I, I moved my scope over real quick, and I caught another one too, and I actually was able to identify which one it is. I don't remember now. R four R four Lovejoy is that comet that uh, yes Lovejoy this one down down on the bottom one. here was, so yeah. all right Bill is cycling a ton of pictures here so I'm gonna go back to Bill so he can he can keep moving here yeah I got three of them now this one's double cluster um, wow and that's uh, uh, FSQ with the uh, Canon 5D Mark III which I just bought it's a great camera I really like it yeah. I don't know, but Jay's got it right now. I haven't. Uh, my cameraman's playing around with it. I haven't gotten. And haven't got the next one yet. is uh, obviously Andromeda M31. Wow. Same exposure, same setup. Yeah. Which what 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 kind of lens or telescope are you using on those? Yeah, FSQ uh, 106. Okay. And then the next one is Pac-Man Pac Nebula. And, and just so people three. are clear, like you captured these just just, just now, yeah, yeah, just now. So yeah. while we were while we were, we were talking, yeah, oh, amazing. And you have to show us your setup again. I I, I love seeing your setup, especially when you that is pretty dance. cool. Yeah, yeah, you got to show a picture of your of your setup because it's just how many telescopes can you pack onto a mount? I will switch over to it here. I um, need to bring up my... Where is it? Go back to full screen. Bring that up. And then I have to turn the light on out there. Let's see. Light on. There we go. And then I'll switch over to the proper screen share. 
So Mark Rudwell says, no, not do a suicide mission to Mars. Come on, Mars, <laughs> what's your sense of adventure? <laughs> And so, yeah, if anyone is uh, is watching this at the AAS, let us know. We would uh, it'd be really cool. To, yeah, to what see you're the seeing there is the, the the middle image is this oh. is and the left image is the scope. Left one's a little overexposed, but uh, the right one's my carport, so you can ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so Gary's got the the other one, the purple-ish one. Yep, this is the same thing, but I've mapped hydrogen as the red. Right. You can see the red. And, and normally, um, when I take color pictures through the filters, I do a lot of adjusting. And right now, like I said earlier, my flats aren't working right. I've done something because see the darker area and like a lighter circle in the center. That's some calibration files that I've got to go and redo. Right. But this is showing you the hydrogen in the propeller that so far we've only seen in black and white. Yeah. And now we have it in awesome. color. Fantastic. I love it. All right, now let's look at the sun some more. Let's so, go to Shah's view. Oh, well, I was going to switch back and forth. So first, we'll look at the at the far out view. So, so this is, I mean, this is live. So this is right now. This is the sun, and obviously, this is coming from New Zealand, where it's daytime. What time is it there, Paul? It's quarter past three in the afternoon. There you go. So, uh, and you can see the those prominences just coming up off the limb. There's a ton of them. Yeah. Look how many there are. And, and we're looking at this in hydrogen and alpha, aren't we? Yep. This is your lens? And, so, and so take a look at that big sunspot area that's right in the middle there. And this is the same one that Shaw has got, but a high-resolution version of it. So I'll switch over to Shaw's view. Check this out. Wow. It's really cute at moment. Very fixed the camera, the view of the camera. So, Shaw, what's your what's your telescope? Uh, I'm using the Skywatcher 120 uh, inch uh, with I'm, the camera. We're having some trouble hearing you, Shaw. I am sorry. We're okay. having some trouble hearing you. Yeah, you're a little far away from your microphone, or? Oh, okay, there you know. That's okay. You just got to talk loudly, I think. All right, all right. Okay. So, I'm using the Skywatcher 120 inch uh, E and the KHY IMG 22 camera, the, the Chinese camera. And, and the filter is just a better filter, so it's really great. Yeah. yeah. And you're in and you're in Malaysia, so what time is it there for you? Uh, it's the quarter past ten at the moment. Yeah. It's so blazing hot. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sitting on the sheet next to the telescope, and you don't want to see me. <laughs> it must be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all having a bit of a cold snap here in North America. <laughs> Oh, I'm not. It's great here in LA. Oh, I'll bet it yeah. is. Yeah. 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 Bay Area, it's it's awesome too. Yeah. yeah. Great, great day. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's great. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go back now. Gary's got a new picture here. This is um M30. I just went blank. M32, 42, Orion. No, this now. is Andromeda. Andromeda. 31. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, you get out of practice. This <laughs> one is done with the Hubble palette, so the green is uh, is the hydrogen in this area. But it yeah. came out pretty good. Yeah, no, this is this is great. I'm I approve of this method. I gotta say, right. I really uh, like I love these the pictures. You're getting in there. Yeah. It, how long were your exposures, Gary? Uh, this is one minute at uh, each one. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And we can see our satellite galaxy over there, and it's headed right for us. One here, and there's one here. Oh, you gotta see! I gotta check out David's David's view here. He's uh, he's pop. I think he's holding his. Have you got your camera up to the spotting scope, David? I don't know if you can hear. Maybe he's, maybe he's yeah, playing with his yeah. hair dryer. Yeah, I was maybe actually. I was. I was clearing. I was clearing off the do. I, yeah. I could hear you. So I unmuted myself. Yeah, I've, I've got the other life webcam hooked up, just looking into the eyepiece. But you can see the. I was trying to get the Earth shine, but the moon is kind of in a thin haze of clouds right now too. So you can't quite see. Maybe if I put it off the dark limb a little bit. Yeah, you can a little bit there. Yeah. I don't know if it shows up much, but you can just barely get the. And this is just the the webcam, the unmodified webcam aiming right at the eyepiece. This was kind of what our first virtual star party sort of looked like. Yeah. Kind of looked like this. Oh, man. 
<laughs> I remember the first PSP. Yeah, yeah, oh, they were they were uh, they were pretty rough. <laughs> oh, Paul's hey. got a picture of his setup here. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know if you can see his setup, or maybe I'm just seeing his icon. That's his hey. icon, but it's Thad. It's Doctor Thad Zabo, right on. Hey. It's Space That's Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> 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 so. Uh, and for people who don't know, Dr. Thad Zabo is a professor at Cerritos College and br- has a PhD in Astro something or other, and will uh, Astro Skittles. Astro Skittles. <laughs> Astro he tastes stuff. a rainbow from space. Uh, okay, yeah, but, it, but it's a rainbow from the radio w- wave spectrum all the way through gamma rays, so oh, it's a much right. bigger rainbow than just Skittles. Well, your spectrum is huge. I've moved to Stuart's view. Yeah, this is um, M33, and it's. Uh, I've done this several times in the VSP, and I was trying something different uh, this time in terms of the technique, and I'm quite pleased with it. This is a three-minute bend, three by three uh, uh, exposure, so it actually may even been four by four. So um, I wouldn't be able to zoom in on it at all, but it's. Um, you can see some of the the flocculent spirals in it. Um, yeah. So, oh, I think it looks very actually, good, actually. Yeah, that looks yeah. Uh, that looks great. So, but I mean, I guess the technique's going to change depending on the object. But sure. uh, for this kind of an object, I think that was definitely. Yeah, the way so I'm to just go. I'm just trying something different. This is a great question. So I'm going to take this question. Paul Hammond asks, if we could see Voyager one and two, where would they be in relation to the stars? So, where are Voyager one and two in the night sky? I guess is the question. Really far. Yeah. I mean, I Voyager... Stellarium will plot those. Yeah. Uh, Celestia might. I'm not sure about Stellarium. Because, I mean, Voy- Voyager 1 did just did a slingshot past Jupiter and Saturn, and I forget if it stayed mostly in the ecliptic plane. I th- think they tried sending Voyager 2 kind of closer to Neptune's North Pole, South Pole, I can't remember exactly which one, but it's probably been shot out of the ecliptic plane. So Voyager 1 you would probably find somewhere in a Zodiac constellation. Um, Voyager 2, good luck. Yeah, Yeah, that's a a great question. I wonder, man, I'm going to task a writer to this, which is, like, where are all the spacecraft if you wanted to try and find them in the night sky? Like, which constellations would you be looking to see Dawn or... New Horizons, right? Well, Dawn, Vesta, and Ceres, if I remember correctly, are, are fairly close by in the sky because if, if I remember right, later on this year, the moon is actually going to occult Vesta, Saturn, and Ceres um, all in a row, one after the other. So, I mean, if you're looking for Dawn, you're looking between where Vesta and Ceres are in the sky, which um, actually, yeah, I guess strangely at that time would be pretty close to where... Saturn would be in the sky. Now, they're, they're both orbiting. All these objects are orbiting, and so right now we're Ceres and Vesta. I think they're in somewhere in Leo. Yeah. So by um, by later this year, then you'd be, be looking in, in Virgo or, or Libra, where uh, yeah. Saturn would it, be. It's weird. Like, I did a, quick, a, little, a little bit of Googling, and I couldn't find this information, but I, I know just the guy to help me figure this out. Google so harder. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. Because Kevin, Kevin Gill has got this great solar system simulator that he's built. And uh, and I bet you we could figure this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna just find out if he can do it. Thank you for the great question. We will dig this up, and I'm gonna try and get this to run in universe today. So uh, I'm gonna go back to Bill for a second. And that's also uh, M33. It, it disappeared. Yeah, I, I lost it here. <laughs> now let me go back. Something happened there. I will redisplay. Now it's just you. There we go. And that's not too exciting. That should do it. It's just Bill. Should be there. There, there it is. Oh, uh, wow. Well, no, we lost it again. It lost, every time I click on myself, it goes away. Weird. Stop clicking yourself, Bill. Yeah, stop. Yeah. What have we told you about clicking yourself in the VSP? That's just odd. Oh, Vance McCauley says, <laughs> Heavens Above has the, uh, has the right ascension info. So, Vance, uh, if you can uh, dig this up and gives the answer, that would be awesome. All right, well, I'm going to move to Gary, and I'll let you battle your technology, because Gary's got This it. is Ryan Nebula. our first for the season. Right nice. on. It's pretty low on the horizon. This is uh, 10 seconds with each filter, and obviously hydrogen is the red. So this is the not-Hubble palette. That's amazing. 
I love that uh, it's the beginning of January. We're already getting it in. Yeah. Fraser, I got that information in front of me if you want it. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I must have been muted because I was trying to tell you. Why were you uh, even listening to no, me? No, we were just ignoring you. No, it's, it's, it's David. A, oh, it's, it's just a, David. No, we don't want to hear from David. No, you what know, is David? it's a, the, apparently my blue snowball must have crapped out. So, uh, Voyager 2 is in Telescopium and Voyager 1 is in Ophiuchus right now. There we go. Yeah, Voyager 2 was the one that it got, it got kicked out of the ecliptic plane. Uh, no, Voyager 1, when it flew past Titan. In order to take a closer look at Titan, it uh, got kicked out of the ecliptic plane. Which I can forgive for, because Titan's pretty awesome. But yeah. I wonder about the other ones. So I wonder, like, where's New Horizons? I mean, it's obviously it's new, on its way to new, Pluto. New, but... Yeah, New Horizons is the same direction as Pluto. It's in Sagittarius. I got the Heavens Above page in front of me right now. Oh, good. Pioneer 10 is in Taurus. Pioneer 11 is in Scutum. Uh, the, the most distant one is Voyager 1 at 126 AU. So. Yeah, yeah, it's like what twelve light hours or something like that to get yeah. messages back and forth. Yeah. All right, Bill, try again. Okay, there we are. That's M thirty three again. Uh, it's uh, pretty much the same object no as uh, we had before, but color this time. Yeah, that's shown up, Stuart. Well, I'm gonna go back and forth here. So check it out. So Stuart's got a much more, uh, much larger version of the image, and then Bill's got a wider field of view. Bill, how are you doing your color? It's just a uh, uh, Mark D, uh, 5D oh, okay. Mark III, All so right. it's a one-shot, yeah. Okay. Oh, just that camera. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Just that right. yeah. I'm going to flip over to Jupiter. Okay, awesome. All right, I'm going to go back to Mike's, to Mike's view, because he's got his photo of Jupiter. Look at that! Yeah, I was, I was going to hold off until David got Jupiter, but uh, I think I'm going to beat him to the punch. It, it, Jeez. Now, this <laughs> is not live, so people, just to be no, clear, everybody... No, no. This is not live. Not not live. I, so I, I had my scope out on Friday for the first time and probably actually the second time in, in two or three weeks. It's just not been good. So I so, took my opportunity when I could. And what was your What was your technique with this, Mike? So yeah. So uh, if you remember the the rotation video that I made last year, I used a program yeah. called uh, Wind Jupos. Uh, so Wind Jupos does that rotation, but it also will take the rotation and derotate it. So the amount of rotation that you see on Jupiter in, what is it, 9 hours and 50 minutes uh, it will blur your image if you expose it for even a minute or two. You'll see blurring. It basically smears along the, the axis of rotation, along the equator. And so this program will take a bunch of those smears and it will put them back in place, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle that centers everything back together. So you, I took a series of, uh, I think, 35 images, and this is a resultant of 11 of those. And then uh, I derotated them and then sharpened them and did all sorts of cool stuff. So, and the reason I went so aggressive with it was because this moon here on the right, Io, slips just into shadow, um, and then the larger moon here, Ganymede, actually starts to transit or, uh, just minutes after Io disappears. So those are always kind of fun events. And I'll show you my, my rough animation that's still a little work in progress a little later. But uh, I, lo I love, w anytime you can get detail up along the, the, the north and the south poles, you, you're, you're in pretty good yeah. sky conditions. And then even like when you can see the nodding and little swirls inside of the great red spot, I, was, yeah. I can zoom in and go for broke there. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, That's so awesome. Katarina asks, um, how big would you be able to get, how, how could we get Alpha Centauri up on the screen? Is it even visible from our position? So it's not visible from uh, everyone who's got the night sky right now. Uh, the only person who could get, I don't know, can you see Alpha Centauri, Shaw, from your position? Yeah, I can. You can, um, yeah. yeah and, uh, trees, and then so. Paul can as well, yeah. I don't know, Paul. Do you have a photo of of uh, Alpha Centauri kicking around that you've taken? I don't know, because it's daytime for them. So unfortunately, well, yeah, but it, and it's not just a night day thing too, right? It's a Southern Hemisphere object. Yeah, there, so or, you, you can know, only see equatorial and below. Yeah, so you can only see Alpha Centauri from, as you I've said, the equatorial and, and to the south. I've seen it from Puerto Vallarta, so that's about twenty degrees south latitude. Um, you could potentially see it from like Key West. 
but it wouldn't be very high above the horizon at all and wouldn't be above the horizon for very long. Um, Puerto Vallarta is up in the sky maybe about four hours, five hours, but yeah, you really you want to be in the southern hemisphere. And for a lot of the southern hemisphere, it's circumpolar. So just like the Big Dipper never sets for most of you know mid-latitudes in the United States, Alpha Centauri doesn't set for um, latitudes that are far enough south. Like so, you know, South Africa, the southern parts of Argentina and Chile, um, New Zealand. So, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to move back over to. Oh man, so Paul's got a zoomed-in version of the sun here. Look at that. Now, is that on that sunspot group? Yep, that's uh, 1944. Yeah, and then look at Shaw's view of this. We'll go back and forth now. And you're also on 1944, Shaw, right? Yeah. So one's an H alpha view and the other one's a visible light view, correct? Yep. Exactly. Nice. Nice. Sorry, but it does, does not those are not sunspots. Those are just. Wow. We'll, let's just sit here and stare for a long time. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, like, I'm dead. This is amazing. Yeah, I know. I'm just gonna go back and forth. Yeah, but not only that, we need we need more sun up in the northern hemisphere. So <laughs> <laughs> if we can get a little bit of it through the through the hangout, I think we should well, warm we'll us up. Nice. In, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So let me. Has, what kind of flares have I know? We've seen some M class flares from this group so far. Has, has there been any like X class flares or anything along those lines? I just had space weather up. I was just about to yeah. go check it. Yeah, there haven't any X class flares yet, but there's been a few smaller M ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is great. Yeah. Check this out. So I got Gary's view. Whoa! Everybody should know this one. The horse head. That's it. And a, some kind of satellite. Yeah. This yeah. is um, this is the flame nebula over here, and this star. If I always forget the name, but if you look at uh, Orion, this is the left-hand star in the belt. Yep, it's on the tech. Thank you. Yep, no problem. <laughs> That's one one minute per filter. That's amazing. Alnitak doesn't bleed out more than that too, because you know, as, a, as bright of a star as it is, you know, typically it would really flood the the pixels around it. So actually, it's a nice job containing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, it's pretty bright. That's the one thing. I mean, if you you look at stellar classifications, the hottest types of stars are called O-class stars, and every star in the, the belt of Orion is, is an O-class star, so they are immensely far away. They're about you know, between 1,000 and 1,500 light years away, and the fact that they still show up as, as visibly as they do gives an indication of just how luminous these stars are. I mean, you're, you're talking about a star whose surface temperature is, if you're looking on the Kelvin scale, an absolute temperature scale, these stars have about five times the surface temperature of the sun. And the kind of crazy thing that goes with that is that the amount of energy that's put out, it's not just, well, it should be five times as luminous. It's five to the fourth power times as luminous for each patch of stars. So if the stars were the same size as the sun, because of that temperature difference, they'd be more than 600 times as luminous. But they're also bigger. And so you take the increased size of the star plus the increased temperature, and you, you get some absolutely phenomenally huge, brilliant stars there in the belt. Wow. Okay. I get there's too much. There's too much. It's, it's blowing my mind. Now we're gonna move to David's view of Jupiter. The, this is yeah. the live view of Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter is just coming up over the. Actually, it's it's uh, it looks a lot better than it did an hour so though. It's clear through the Merc right now. So it's it's up in an image. I might image after the show. I may do something on this. It's uh, you know we're actually in another resonance with the Great Red Spot is not visible like again earlier oh. tonight. <laughs> I like was promised the Red Spot. <laughs> I, now, the red, red Spot crosses the limb about uh, about 11:30 Eastern time, 8:30 Pacific time tonight. Yeah. I'm I, uh, I, I'm going to be disappearing in a moment because I got to go polar align. I'm going to try and do a 360 degree map of Jupiter tonight. We've just so. kind of. Oh, uh -oh. incidentally, the, the, the moon Io, Io is going to be popping out too here probably in about 20 minutes or so. It's behind Jupiter right now. I can so, show what it looks like going into Jupiter. <laughs> there you go, Mike. He, uh, he just threw sure. the wallet down. <laughs> here, check this out. Okay, well, Mike's, Mike's showing his version of it. Look yeah. at this. So this, this, so this was, uh, I, you got Io, this is upside down from the version I had before, but Io pops behind the shadow. 
yeah. and then I got it reversing back out, and then Ganymede goes into transit. So now the interesting thing about moon transits of Jupiter around opposition, the shadow is very close to the actual moon itself. So as you yeah. see Ganymede come in, they're they're almost touching. So I think uh, yesterday and today they're yeah o overlapping if you can if you can resolve it down to that. They're, they're almost casting straight back when the Jupiter right. Yeah, I always like those, those when they're when they're those really shadow close. Transit, it's always fun. So shadow transit timing them is how they first figured out the uh, a rough estimate of the speed of light. Too. Right, it was a uh, Romer in the yeah. 1600s, seeing that hey, yeah. wait a minute, they're coming a little bit too soon when Jupiter's at opposition. No, wait, they're going, they're taking longer than they should when Jupiter is near conjunction with the sun, and just that difference of about two AU from the the two positions is about 16 light minutes. And that's you know we're you know throwing things off by about 16 minutes. So knowing that 16 minutes and the distance to Jupiter was the first kind yeah, of rough his, estimate of his, the speed of light. His, his estimate was within about 10 percent of the modern value. Yeah. He did pretty good. Uh, Tom Nafee says uh, I've seen Omega Centauri from northwestern California. Yeah, so, I've, I've, I've seen it from LA. Well, yeah, not from, LA, but you know, yeah, from, get up to a dark. From, from Florida in April, you can pick up uh, Omega Centauri right around April, May. Um, so Mike K asks, could someone describe the camera equipment used to capture these live views, video or typical AP cameras? So I don't think we've got the same camera twice here. <laughs> so I'm going to move through them. I'm going to start with each person. You tell me what your what your camera is. So so Bill, and we got your latest image. So what, yeah, what are right we now here? this uh, actually let me talk about the image first. NGC two five three, the Sculptor Galaxy on the lower right, and NGC two eighty eight or eight, I think two eighty eight. Yeah, the, the cluster on the upper left. Uh, the camera is uh, just a pretty standard DSLR, uh, you know, a moderately high end one. It's a file of Canon five D Mark three, um, thirty two hundred ASA, two minutes. Uh, it does pretty well for this sort of application. I actually like it a little better than the sixty DA that I had, and finally gave up astronomically with it and gave it to my wife for a regular camera, because um, I think this one is essentially just as good for this kind of purpose. Yeah, so it's just a also standard... Also dedicated astro cameras, but for this purpose, it's this is great. Yeah. So it's, a, it's pretty much a standard DSLR, so the kind of stuff that you you might see people taking pictures with on you know on Google Plus and Flickr yeah, and all exactly. that. Exactly, yeah, it's now full frame DSLR in this case. Yeah, uh, and so Dave, back to your view of <laughs> Jupiter. I, I bought mine at Walmart, 20 bucks. There you go, a $20 <laughs> webcam attached it, to... To yeah, an eight-inch telescope. All, all you gotta do is take the take the lens off the front and put an eyepiece barrel on it and plop it in the telescope. Perfect. Uh, now, Gary, you've got a view right now. Well, you're still looking at the horse head, but your camera. What's your camera? Uh, mine is a QSI made by QSI. It's a CCD camera. It's cooled. I normally run the chip at minus 20 degrees centigrade, so that cuts down the noise. And I always take at least a 10-second exposure. So yeah. I don't get anywhere near the live that the video does, but I get a lot more light from the deep sky objects. But we couldn't take your camera, pop it out, uh, and go take some pictures with it. No. No. No, no it, it would be bolted. totally useless for that. Yeah, it is bolted onto your telescope, and and that's it's not going anywhere. Now, now, Mike, when you took these pictures of Jupiter, what were you using? Yeah, so I use essentially a, a real high-end industrial-grade um, webcam. Uh, it's made by Point Grey Research, which is up by you in uh, Vancouver, Canada. And it shoots a real high frame rate, like higher frame rate than most of the HD webcams that you'd use for Hangouts. Uh, like, I think most of my Jupiter shots are 120 frames a second. And, uh, I don't have any cooling on it or anything like that, but it has a pretty good sensitivity. Like uh, not not so much noise and uh, picks up a lot of faint objects for planetary work. Uh, Paul, so back to your son. Oh, look at that! And so, what what camera are you using? Uh, that's also a Point Grey Grass Grasshopper Three. That's great. Now you're using um, hydrogen alpha, though, right? Yeah, these are hydrogen alpha scopes. Yeah. So it's on the, but it's not on the camera. It's on the, it's on your, it's on your eyepiece. Or where, where have you got your filter? Oh, the whole scope's the filter. Oh, the whole scope. Well, right, you're using a solar scope. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
Right, and then you have a different telescope for nighttime stuff. Yes. Yeah. And Scott, what camera are we looking at here? Is this your Microsoft Life Cam? <laughs> oh, you're muted, Scott. <laughs> what he's saying? Muted? You can't hear him? Uh, so, Shaw, you've got... Uh, what have you got? Uh, yeah, I'm using the GBHY Chinamid camera, the IMG 160E. So it's right, a video okay. camera, so it's basically it's quite cheap and it gives a quite, quite high frame rate, around 60 frames per second. Uh, right, so it's like a high frame rate video camera. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great. And then uh, Stuart, and you got you got a new image. Yeah, Crab this Nebula? is yeah, it's Crab Nebula, first one of the season. It's not a very good uh, shot actually, but it's really low on the sky for me. And um, this is a two-minute uh, exposure, binned a two by two, just a luminance channel. And I have exactly the same camera that um, Gary does. In fact, Gary helped me uh, pick my options with mine. Cool. Um, and Thad has put up his map of Jupiter, which is cool. But he's out polar line right now. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Bill's view and check this out. Yeah, I'm 42. Uh, it's uh, another two minute with the same uh, camera. A little bit of geosynchronous satellite here on the, on the right making a streak. Sorry. Uh, I should come back <laughs> that here happens. shortly. Come on, come back. Oh, and Gary's got my favorite image. I don't know. We got the rosette in color. Nice. And I'm getting a little better at getting the colors balanced. Yeah, it's coming together pretty quickly for you now. Um, yeah. And I'll switch to a view right here since we're talking about cameras, and uh, show you mine real quick. I can find where it is. Hmm. <laughs> it's never easy. There it is. All right. Well, while we wait, I want to do a quick station identification. You are watching the Virtual Star Party, which we hold every Sunday night on as a live Google Plus Hangout on Air yeah. on uh, on YouTube. And you can find it if you just do a search for Virtual Star Party. We have a whole web, a whole page on Google Plus. We also tr post the live video in as many places as we can think of. Yeah. I post it live onto Universe Today. Uh, we post it onto Google Plus, on YouTube. So you Twitter, can find it on, all, on Twitter. Types, we, yeah. yeah, exactly. And I know it's hard to find, but one thing that will help is if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, which is the Universe Today YouTube right. channel. And, uh, so and Universe Today, my channel, because I host as yep. well. And yep. honestly, Virtual Star Party, if you just search it on Google, it will show up. Yeah. It's yeah. so easy to find. And we've actually got uh, two videos maybe coming out tomorrow. One, which is this explainer series that I'm doing. So can, will the, can the Sun Explode is the topic we're doing tomorrow. Um, and then the other one is we had an interview with uh, Dr. Kevin Grazier, who was the science advisor for Gravity and Battlestar Galactica, and he was actually oh, a scientist cool. on the Cassini team, and he talks about some of the discoveries that Cassini made. So that's going to. And you've got stuff going on tomorrow. We start our streaming of Double AS with Tony down at yeah. Over there it's going to be lots of awesome space stuff happening this week. Yeah, it's going to be pretty great. Um, all right, well I'm going to go back. Do you, do you have your picture back, Bill, or? I should hear shortly. Okay, and Shaw, yeah. I think, is sharing his, his young moon. Yeah, I've got oh, my no. camera. It's Venus, actually. It's Venus! <laughs> no! Yeah. Uh, this was taken on the 2nd January, I think. Yeah, two days back. Two, five days back. Three days back. Uh, Man. I tried to get it today, but it's a big cloudy day. But this was the one that I posted. That it was uh, Nancy, I think, where he, she posted on Yugo's Today's website. Yeah, yeah this, this is the video for, for Venus. It's so, so it's a it, it, it's a it's tiny and it's a, and this is what's cool is it's about to go into the position that it was in just before the Venus transit was that last year right yeah was it, oh, a year and a half ago right yeah yeah, yeah. In, in, in inferior conjunction is January 11th yeah so it's gonna so be that's pretty months. small oh man that's fantastic yeah and so and the crazy thing is Venus gets at its brightest when it's reaching this crescent, but I mean this is just such a thin 
such a thin crescent. It must have been really low on the horizon when you captured it. Hey, it was daytime, actually. It was noon. Oh, you captured it during the day. Yeah, you caught yeah. That's the only time that I can, I can get Venus really clear because by, the, by sunset, I'm yeah. getting really that, that clear in turbulence, the clouds. That's fantastic, yeah. I mean, Venus is so bright that you can see it in the daytime. It's pretty close to the sun. Fringer, looking so at I wouldn't recommend anyone looking <laughs> without a good telescope. Just, just amazing. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to uh, Mike's. Got another one of his pictures. <laughs> this is this is digging back to last <laughs> June since yeah. since I'm clouded out here. But this was one of the best of Saturn. So I showed you the Jupiter it took Friday, and this was uh, one of my best Saturns. So. Wow. Yeah, we're not gonna get Saturn in the sky for another four months. Probably, yeah, probably for yeah. a while. Right. Mm-hmm. No, nope, but it is it is a Mars mm-hmm. year this year, so yeah, later we'll, on, we will we'll, we will be getting Mars toward April. So. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. very exciting. Yes. Uh, oh, looking, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Looking at Jupiter right now, I can see uh, Eo just popping out on the limb. I kind of overexposed it, so Jupiter looks a little cruddy. Yeah. But looking at it, you can just see Eo coming out of the from behind you here right now. Oh, it's behind. Yeah, so it's, it's not going to transit. Yep. Yeah, yeah. See that little see, see that little oh, nod yeah. at about a three o'clock position. That that's it right there coming up. And you know, so you know, it's cool. amazing. It, it it moves so fast that I so I was shooting red, green, and blue thirty seconds each. So in ninety seconds, I was smearing. So <laughs> yeah. I, I had like a misalignment yeah. of the channel. So I mean, it, it, the, the rarity of you catching it there right now as it pops out is I, is going to disappear I, in just I, a minute. I always the circumstances for uh, where the moons if we're going to get any shadow transits during these and I noticed that earlier that it's like, oh, we'll get it right at the end of the star party. Nice. Oh, I got to say, uh, I got to comment in. So Peter Lake says, Happy New Year, guys. And if you don't know, Peter Lake is uh, one of the contributors to the Virtual Star Party. He's located in Australia. And uh, right Peter's back at people. you, Peter. Yeah. Peter's good, good people. So yeah. he, he runs with the eye telescope. Yeah. Um, he does a lot with AAVSO. I mean, just great guy. He's got he got a monster scope. He's got his plane wave. I mean, yeah, twenty inch plane wave. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> quite a telescope. When Peter joins us, uh, yeah, you can uh, you know. Um, all right, I'm gonna go back to Bill's view because he was trying to get this uh, show off this image of the Orion Nebula, and then it got uh, it has a issued. No, there stop we go. touching <laughs> things. <laughs> Hey, Google Plus has been acting weird for me tonight. It actually logged me out for some reason, and I had to put the password for Google I, back in. I've it's had that strange. happen quite a bit. Yeah, um, yeah M42, and, and as I was saying, there's a geosynchronous uh, satellite over here, which is pretty common in that part of the sky. Uh, you get that a lot. Uh, kind of mm-hmm. annoying, but uh, if you're doing long exposures, you can average them out. While I'm at it here, since I've been fiddling around, um, I've got something else here as well. Um, California Nebula. Oh, right on. No, oh, that's great. Zoom a little bit. Here we go. Zoom and enhance. <laughs> Zoom and enhance. Well, the data's in there, so... <laughs> and, and, Bill, could you do me a favor and uh, put your stills into the event? I... I love it. I love your stills. I always love them. Well, everybody, them. everybody, put your pictures into the event. Yeah, yeah I can do that. I probably need yeah. to clean them up a little bit, but no. Oh, don't be ashamed. <laughs> Come on. Uh, you really? know, you, when you take long exposure stuff, you, you, it bugs you, and the short exposure stuff bothers you. No, you <laughs> I'm one of those guys that I hate noisy images. That's just like make us like chuck on a blackboard, you know. Okay, I gotta show you. Shaw, Shaw's got sort of the the right on the the limb of the sun. Look at that. On the limb. Yeah. I'm not really sure which sunspot number is there. Um, couldn't really find it. It's a whole sunspot, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's just great. And then uh, and we'll go back to Paul's view here to get some perspective. Maybe we can find that sunspot group. Is that the one up at the top? I bet you it's up at the top there of the sun. Yeah. I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks like the same. There's like two. I'll go back here, to Shaw's view, and you can see there's sort of like these two, two spots. Yeah, I think it's the one at the top. 
Yeah. Yeah, on the west end. Yeah. Which I guess, I mean, the sun is sideways, right? In his view. Like, normally you'd get these sunspots running along the equator of the sun. You don't get right. sunspots up at the top like that. Um, oh, and we're, so yes, Allison, uh, it's not inappropriate. We love you, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're really glad that you, know, that you find it amazing. Yeah, we, we had a lot of fun here being able to share all this. I mean, we have people from literally all across the world yeah. right here showing this just the amazing things that are happening in the universe. This is a special night, though. I mean, I yeah. got I to gotta say, what, what we've got arrayed together tonight is just fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go to Stuart's view. Uh, let me... Um, is that the 37? No. Oh, close! Oh, you're so close. M36. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> so since I have actually a couple backed up since, since you're to me. So this is M36. This is an open cluster, and, and you can see the difference between this and this, which um, is a... What is this A? It's a globular cluster. Globular cluster. <laughs> Just leading you by the nose, you know. Yeah. So that's the difference when we talk about open clusters versus globular clusters or globular <laughs> clusters. Um, this is uh, M15, which is pretty low on the horizon, and I'm right above a tree, so I thought I'd nab it uh, uh, for for tonight. Why would anyone ever make fun of Fraser for saying globular? I don't, I don't get that. You guys are no, so mean. No I way. Would Mike, never... Mike has completely vindicated me. It's done. It's I did, I did, it yes. is a perfectly legit. Unless you hacked a web page somewhere. No, I, if legit... I did it, I did it for you. See? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just like we're. You know how there's the supermoon. Well, we've come up with, with the name with David. David has come up with the name with the mini moon, <laughs> and so that's the one that's going to stick now, and we're going to make sure that everyone knows. So, David, what is a mini moon? The mini moon is actually we have one coming up here. The next full moon. It is the visually smallest full moon of the year. The moon, the moon that is the closest to apogee for the year. So we actually have one coming up here in gen, uh, the next full moon here in January for 2014. Cause it's the new but year it's, now. It's, the, it's the furthest, right? So it's the furthest yeah. moon. That's the that's a full moon. Full moon. Yeah. So is it going moon. to cause anti earthquakes with it? Yeah, being on Earth. the other side of the Earth. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it's like a puppy or a kitten, right? Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> uh, Jim Meeker says that we need Nicole to do Flocculent Galaxy. Yeah, well, I'm the yeah, Flocculent! <laughs> Flocculent! <laughs> Done. Um, Although we do need Nicole. Yeah, I will see but her. she's at the AAS right now. Well, I yeah, hope she's watching. So, and I'll see her in a little under two months. We'll be at Science Online. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do Science Online this year, unfortunately. But. Oh, your loss. I'll be there. Uh, Bill's got the Pleiades. Oh, and then he touched. <laughs> and then he Bill. touched things. <laughs> it's back. Yep. I no. There nope, we go. Now it is. Oh. Oh, that so, is great. And look it, at that. You well, that it was awesome. great. There it is. was great. Then Bill. <laughs> Bill, literally. I do keep not, messing it up. <laughs> don't don't know. Don't touch a thing. See um, why we're telling you not to touch up your images? Because this happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't move, don't breathe. <laughs> but this is great. This is the, the Pleiades. And, I mean, you can see this with the unaided eye, and it just looks terrific. But you can Seven see sisters, with this long, room. this really long exposure, you can see all that nebulosity. Because these are all young, hot stars, and they formed in a cluster in a, in a nebula, just like the Orion Nebula. And now they're starting to spread apart and... and in a few more thousand years, million years, thousand years, I'm not sure, million years, they'll be completely spread apart, and there'll be a much more open cluster like the one that uh, that Stuart just showed us. So one of the things I've always liked about the Pleiades is, is is you get this blue color here, but then there's this orange star up here, which makes nice contrast. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful image. Uh, Gary's view. This is the Bubble Nebula. Oh yeah, and M52 up here. I'm so used to the to the monocolor one. So now when I see the color, it's yeah, yeah. But it looks I'm seeing double. I think like if you look on the upper left, you can see there's like the stars are sort of doubled. Are, are you I seeing need, double bubble? Do I need to get my vision checked? I'm not sure. It, no, oh, I just I yeah, want to say double bubble. I think bubble. I got a little bit of movement. Yeah. 
Oh, it was taking it. That was a one minute, so I think I got a little bit of movement. Oh, Paul, this isn't... What is this, Paul? It's Venus. Uh, live. It's live. Oh, it's oh live. my God. Live. That's cool. Wow. That's awesome. Nice job, man. You can see the clouds moving past it, too. <laughs> in, in one week oh, from the conjunction. This yeah. is the first. Yeah. This is a total first. You're I can't believe it. Shaw's about. like, boom, check it out, Venus, in the daytime. daytime Venus. And, and Paul's like, I got that. Hold on. <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown. <laughs> that's been thrown. I, yeah, that's that's just amazing. I'm, I'm writing a post, uh, probably go out to Moral Fraser, about uh, catching Venus at inferior conjunction. It is both in the high Arctic. Yeah, because it's it's, uh, it's a difficult thing to see, but it is possible because it's going to be passing actually about five degrees from the sun. Jazz, just that, wow, amazing, amazing! You got that live. That's 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 fab fabulous. I, I think we our, our year is up. I, I think. <laughs> Our hour, our year is up. That's it. That's all you get all year, people. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, no, our our hour is uh, our hour is up, and it so is. to uh, we need to kind of wrap this up. So, uh, any last images that are out there right now? I think uh, uh, I'm about I'm, good, uh, I'm about three minutes away from, from one. Bring one up right now. I've got the right. heart nebula up right now. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Overtime. <laughs> you guys get paid more. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Well, then uh, let's. Uh, I'm trying to think what's happening, what's coming up. So, uh, Astronomy Cast tomorrow is going to be. Uh, we're going to be doing the third part of our series on making telescopes. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about uh, making your own space telescope. So that'll be cool. Um, and then you. What have you got? What have you got coming up from the AAAS, Scott? Everything. So uh, it'll be going until Thursday. Uh, Tony Darnell will be live um, all around. He'll be there for the James Webb Space Telescope Town Meeting. He'll be going around, and he, he has a backpack and that will be streaming all over the place. So, again, go see uh, Tony Darnell and Alberto Conti at the James Webb Space Telescope um, booth over there. And yeah, we'll be all over. We'll, we'll be on Ustream, though, to, mm. and Facebook, because we're cheating on Google+. Plus. Uh -oh. But um, no, we've already done some tests there. We got everything going. We're really excited about it. So, uh, if you head over to HubbleSite.org, which is the Hubble Space Telescope site, and go to Explore and Deep Astronomy, and that is where you will find the homepage for everything. Now that you're working so closely with the folks at the Hubble Space Telescope, have you passed along that request of getting the Hubble Space Telescope live in the virtual star party? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Yeah, doesn't right. quite work. But I can you anybody can go grab the raw images. No, I think it can work that way. We the kinds of things that people figured out with the virtual star party, I bet they could figure it out. No, but <laughs> I will. You know, tell you as soon as they are put onto the server, I will yeah. grab them. Well, the like, James hey. Webb then. Make sure that on the James Webb there's like a live view mode. That's you know, what? I'll throw my Microsoft live cam up on James Webb when it launches in 2018. Yeah, yeah. would you please? Yeah. Like, can you guys away. install a USB port on the James Webb? That would be great. <laughs> if we need any help, I'm sure we could just, you know, they could just come and ask. I'm <laughs> very happy to help them. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to do a couple of last images. So, Bill, and, and I'll also say goodbye. So, Bill, uh, you got the heart? What is it? That's start and you like drop, correct. So. Oh, that's great, Bill. Nice. Awesome. Well, Bill, thank you very much. It was a uh, it was great to have you. No problem been, at all. Uh, thank you. Glad to be it's here. Been, it's been a while, and, uh, and it's always a treat. Dave Dickinson, it's great to see your view from your telescope, as opposed <laughs> to uh, you know, yeah, yeah, as opposed to your class. face. I, I've only got, like three webcams out here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're starting and, to become uh, like me. Us, hopefully, on Friday for the weekly space hangout where we run always. down the big news. So. Oh yeah, fun. Awesome. Okay. And uh, Gary's got a new picture here. Yeah, it's M81 and M82. And nice. you can actually see uh, this one's got a, I don't remember which one's which, but it's got a nice big red hydrogen outburst that oh, you yeah. can see. Yeah. And if, if you look in the arms, you can see some red nebulosity coming out in there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. 
Mike, thanks for bringing the uh, the pictures from before. Sorry, yes, what's um, you know. Yeah, and they, hopefully next time. It's just been one string of Sunday night clouds or rain after another. So yeah. one of these days we'll catch a break. Yeah. Uh, Paul, so thank you very much for bringing the Southern Hemisphere. Wait a second. This this isn't that, possible. That is not a space station. That's a moon. <laughs> daytime. Yeah, daytime moon. Wait, daytime. didn't we do a video about that, how the moon is so bright? Yeah, yeah you can see it during the day. That's crazy. <laughs> With Venus too. Wow. We've had Paul has bought us all three things that can cast a shadow. That's true. That's true. I'll That's bet awesome. you could cast a shadow from the International Space Station because it's as bright as Venus. But <laughs> and Shaw, I'm so glad you're able to make it and uh, and bring that the the live view of the of the sun. That was just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it was and, great uh, to have you back, Shaw. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At some point, we got to do the night view. I mean, we got to do the eastern, the eastern hemisphere. What do we, what do you call it? Yeah, where we can get that that side of the world and get uh, and get some. That means we're objects. waking up early. Waking yeah, up early. that's all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, we're up at five anyway. <laughs> I'm up at five. Yeah, Stuart, thanks. Hey, that's Stuart, cool. What's this? This is MGC eight nine one, um, as ed edge on spiral galaxy. That's zoomed in, and this is the zoomed out view uh, there. So, that's great. Oh, nice. And there's Paul was, hiding behind his telescope here. I just got to get this to you. Check it out. Yeah, he's he's a real person. <laughs> just some kind of robot. Yeah. And uh, Thad is has left us to go polar align his telescope, but uh, but thanks Thad. So awesome. So again, amazing, amazing yeah. night. This is this is a highlight. I, unbelievable. So and Scott, as as always, it's great to have you uh, helping out and. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad everyone liked our trailer that we uh, recorded oh, yeah. at YouTube. I saw that. that was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. With that. Yeah. So. Oh, you you post. Where did you post it, Scott? Because on YouTube. Everywhere. No, wait, wait, wait. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The little outtakes at the end were actually pretty cool too. Yeah, I like that. I, yeah, I was debating whether putting those in, and I'm glad I did. Uh, well, I, we, I'm glad you did. We yeah. do that on our on our videos as well. We put bloopers at the end of every of every video that yeah. we shoot, and uh, yeah, so cool. Okay, well, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for joining. What an amazing night! Yeah, and we'll see you all next Sunday. Next Sunday. Great Bye. having a full Bye. house. Bye, Good everybody. Night.